Hey you, it's Shelby here from Little Coffee Fox, and today I want to talk to you about watercolor paint. If you are just getting into watercolor and you try to shop for watercolor paint, you might make your head explode with all of the different options and types and varieties. I mean, there's tubes, there's pans, there's liquids. How do you know what the difference is? How do you know what's best for what you need? And when you have limited money and you can't just throw it on anything, you don't want to gamble on one type of watercolor only to find out that it's not quite right or what you expected. So today I'm going to be walking you through the differences between tube watercolors, pan watercolors, and liquid watercolors. And I'll share some of the best uses for each type of watercolor paint and a couple of really handy tips for whichever one you decide to go with. So let's get started. The first type of watercolor that I want to get into is pan watercolor, which is usually the type of watercolor that most people have their first experiences with. This is the kind of stuff that you get in grade school when you're making all kinds of cute little kid paintings and you're hanging them on the fridge and stuff. Now you might be thinking, these are just for kids, they're not for me, but pan watercolors range from stuff that's super, super basic like this, all the way to professional level watercolor. So don't worry about that. That's pretty much the case with almost all watercolors. You can usually find really, really student grade, basic, lower quality type paints, and then you can find the super, super fancy, high quality stuff. So usually you can find something that hits your budget one way or the other. That being said, you can actually do quite a lot with a little pan like this. Uh, don't, don't knock it till you try it. The thing that is special about these paints is that they're a bunch of dried cakes or pans, and they are dry right now but when you activate them with water, then you can pick up, you know, your wet watercolor pigment and apply it to your paper. And then when you're done, any water that you have still sitting in the pan evaporates on its own, the pan dries out, and you just start all over again the next time you want to paint. There's tons of different ways that you can mix watercolor. It's an incredibly versatile medium. But one of the best ways I find to mix them is to get some paint on your brush and then put it in a mixing area, which for a lot of these is like the lid of the palette, you can grab some of these very basic colors and create unique and interesting blends to use on your paintings. So obviously there's the lid, which usually comes with one of these, or you can get something with a little bit more space, like this kind of a palette here. The pros of this type of paint is that it is extremely compact. You can usually travel with this kind of thing pretty well. They even make travel palettes. You know, I actually have one. Let me show you. Here it is. This is a Winsor & Newton travel palette. Let's see if I can get it open. So this is a little pan palette. It came like this with all of the little pans pre-filled. You know, you can go just about anywhere with this. This is super, super handy. It has little um, trays for you to mix things in. You just would need to bring some kind of a water source. Uh, it even has a little tiny brush in it. You can find these from all different kinds of brands, little travel palettes, but that's one of the huge pros to pan palettes is that they are great if you're someone who likes to take your watercolors with you on the road, if you're going on a vacation or a trip, or if you just want to go somewhere and people watch, go to the park or something, it's great for that. Here's another example of a pan palette. This is my Color Colorico, Colorico, Fine Tech paints. They are these gorgeous gold paints and I've had them for a very long time. And you just hydrate them, use them, they dry out, boom. They're good. Another big pro of pan watercolors is that they're really easy to use. They're no fuss. It's all ready for you. You just use your water and your brush. You move the paint around and you put it on the paper and you use it. It's very, very user-friendly. And lastly, pan watercolors are some of the more affordable for entry level. It's usually pretty easy to find something that's decent quality that doesn't break the bank. However, some of the cons of pan watercolors is that they have rather limited colors. You can obviously learn how to mix with very few basics, but it can be a little hard. So I even struggle to mix a good purple a lot of the time. So I like having a base purple and a lot of watercolor pans don't have certain colors. You know, you have a very limited set. Also something to note is that pan watercolors can, especially cheaper pan watercolors, can be less vibrant colors. They can be a little bit harder to get a really good bold color. I mean, you can build up with layers. That's one of the joys of watercolors is you can build and build and build. But sometimes it's nice to have something a little bit more bright and vibrant right out the get-go. And cheaper watercolors can sometimes struggle with that. Not always, 
but sometimes. One of my best tips for pan watercolors is using a eyedropper or something like this, getting clean water and putting a couple drops in every well that I plan on using. And sometimes just every well, because I don't know what I'm gonna do yet. Just a few minutes before you actually start painting because you definitely want to give it a minute to activate let that pigment sort of get ready to go before you need it while you're painting. Because watercolor can be a bit of a fast-paced painting process and you don't want to have to get held up on a dry pan. The next type of paint that I want to talk about is tube watercolor paint. Tube. I feel like I say that weird. Tube. Tube watercolors are simply paint that you squeeze onto a palette or into a pan and then use that paint to make your paintings. It's basically as obvious as it sounds. So how is it different from pan watercolors? Well, they're almost not really that different. Tubes basically are the step just before pan watercolor. So I just bought these little plastic wells and filled them myself with the colors that I wanted. Then I can use them exactly like a pan watercolor set, basically. You hydrate them, you use them, you let them dry, just exactly like pans. So if you're ever concerned about the difference between tube watercolor and pan watercolor, don't worry about it. They're pretty much the same thing. There's just one extra step with tube watercolor. You might be wondering, why would you pay to do an extra step when you can get it in the form that you're gonna be using it? Let me explain by getting into some of the pros and cons, why some people choose tube pans, <laughs> tube paints over watercolor pans. Yes. One of the biggest pros to tube watercolor is that I can take a tube, fill up one of these little pans, and then use that pan until it is depleted, and then still have a ton more paint to put into the pan, refill it, and do it again. Basically, you get more bang for your buck. If you know you're going to be using a color or a set of colors for a long time, then if you get yourself a tube and you have a handy way of using it, like a palette that you like, you can really get a lot more miles out of one tube than a single pan. Another big pro of tube watercolors is that they tend to be pretty damn concentrated. Like you're not gonna get wishy-washy light colors, unless of course you chose to buy a palette that is pastel and light. But I find that whenever I use tubes and make my own palette, my own little pan palette, I think that they tend to be a little bit more concentrated and vivid. Another really big bonus to tube watercolors is that you have a lot more flexibility. Because if you're using tubes, you can mix your own custom colors. Like while the paint is still wet, use like a palette knife or something and make a custom red or purple or skin tone or whatever you want to use and then let it dry and then have a cake of that very specific color that you made. And similarly, you can also mix and match your full palette. So I purchased these paints all individually. I decided what colors I wanted and put them together to create a single palette. Like I know I use a lot of different varieties of blue, blue, green, turquoise. So instead of mixing those over and over again, I purchased the tubes that I wanted for those colors and put all of those variations that I know I'm gonna use again and again in this custom palette. So all of that is what makes watercolor tube paint one of my favorite ways to use watercolors. That being said, there are some downsides. So while you certainly can purchase individual tubes, that does tend to be reserved for higher end watercolors. For example, these are Daniel Smith watercolors, which is one of the more expensive types of watercolor paint, which great to use, but if you're a beginner, very challenging on the budget front. Cheaper tube watercolor, they tend to come in limited sets, exactly like a pan. So you're still limited in that way. Albeit you can still mix your own custom colors with the tubes that came in that limited set. So you can still make do and do some, some cool stuff with it. It's just not quite as flexible as the higher end stuff. Also, if you use a tube set, you're gonna need to buy an additional palette or something to put it on. You're gonna need to get something like this, or this is my favorite new thing, this lovely ceramic palette. Of course, you don't need to get this fancy, but you know, it's nice. Uh, but you need to buy something to put your tube paint into. You can't just use it directly on the paper. And finally, tube paint is a little bit less travel friendly unless you specifically go out and buy a small little travel pan set palette like this to fill with your tube paint. It is an extra step and it's more work for you to kind of put together something that's great for traveling and small and compact. So it's just something to think about. Big tip, big tip for 
using tube paint. Squeeze the tubes and put them, you know, put them in their pants, put them wherever you're putting them on your palette, and then let them dry for a couple of days before you actually use them. The reason why is because when the paint is still in its wet form, original wet form, a lot of paint gets wasted on the brush and in the jar rather than being used properly on the page. So the best practice is to just squeeze it into your pans and then let it dry for a couple of days until it's a proper little cake. Finally, I want to talk about liquid watercolors, which I didn't even know existed until a couple of years ago, and then it came into my life and amazed me, because it's so different from traditional watercolors. Let me explain why. Liquid watercolors, like this Dr. P.H. Martin's Hydrus Liquid Watercolors, it's always a mouthful. These are super concentrated little jars of pigment. They behave the same way as the, uh, the normal watercolors that you're used to in terms of how they're used on the page and all that, but they are in a completely different form when you receive them. Oftentimes these will have little droppers like that. The way you use these is you get some kind of a palette. I often use this kind of a guy, this little cheap six well one, or again, one that's got more options, more mixing room and all that also super cheap. I think this was like two, three dollars, like super, super cheap. But you put them in there and then you dilute them with water and use them as you would any other watercolor. So the pros of liquid watercolors is for one, like I said, super concentrated, like crazy concentrated, or at least that's the case with Dr. P.H. Martin's. I, I don't know about everything else, but these are billed as very concentrated watercolors. And because these are already liquid, you don't have to make them into liquids or anything, they blend so smoothly with each other. The different colors blend beautifully and just buttery, buttery, very nice. And lastly, these bad boys are super long lasting. I've had several of these jars, several of these bottles for years, and I feel like I've barely made a dent because they're so concentrated. You have to use very little to get what you're actually trying to achieve. These types of paints are fantastic if you like to use nibs, like dip pens, with your watercolor, whether you're doing line work, whether you're doing calligraphy, these are perfect for that use. I've loved using them for lettering. And also because they blend so beautifully, that makes them even better for lettering because they make some really gorgeous pops of color on your lettering project and they blend really nicely with each other. So I. I love them for that use especially. Now, some of the cons. They are the least travel-friendly types of watercolors I have found because they are not super consistent on the rehydration. I dropped a bunch of them into this palette that I've opened a thousand times already. These are all Dr. P.H. Martin's, and I found that some of them hydrate fine, but that's not necessarily the case for each color. I've noticed that some of the colors get really crumbly. They're not lovely liquids anymore once you try to rehydrate them after they've dried. So I find that these are basically impossible to travel with and, and be able to rely on them to rehydrate the same way that pans or tubes would do. So yeah, I don't like them for travel at all, would not recommend. Also, I've had some problems with some of the paints becoming congealed and really thick and basically unusable in the tube. They have become clumpy and kind of gross, like it doesn't really like slosh around anymore, it kind of sludges around in here. And it's not all the colors, by all means. Um, it's a handful of colors, but it is really disappointing because, you know, I've only had these for maybe four years, like not that ridiculously long. Whereas I have had this pan watercolor set for about the same amount of time. I'm pretty sure I bought them about the same time, and I've had no problems with being usable and reliable several years down the line. And it sucks that some of these Dr. P.H. Martin's paints have sort of dried up and become gross. And of course, that could just be Dr. P.H. Martin's. They're one of the only brands that I've really used. Take it with a grain of salt, but it's just something that I have experienced on more than one color. It's just something to keep in mind. I've also found that at least, again, Dr. P.H. Martin's tend to come in sets of colors rather than individual bottles. However, Equalines, these two colors, I did buy individually. So I imagine that it varies from brand to brand, but it's something to keep in mind, again, with the limited palette versus the full palette of the, all the colors that you want. Uh, you know, you might have to pay a little bit more to get all the colors that you want, and you might get some colors that you don't need. And one little tip, if you want to try to use liquid watercolors, definitely use some kind of a palette like this and add a few drops of water with something like a little eyedropper so that you can get different levels of dilution 
with your paint because as I've said, crazy concentrated, super concentrated, uh, that gives you better control overall as you're painting. You can always add more pigment. It's really hard to remove pigment. In conclusion, all of these are really good options depending on what kind of project you're wanting to do. If you are a complete beginner, you're just getting started, the whole thing overwhelms you, don't be shy about getting a super cheap Prang or Crayola watercolor pan set like what you'd get for a kid because one of the problems that a lot of artists have especially as they're getting started, is they are afraid to use their supplies. They spend money on them and they don't want to waste them making something terrible. But if you buy something that's like three bucks, the pressure's kind of off. You don't have to worry so much about making something beautiful. You can make crap and make crap again and learn that way which is the best way to do it, really. And you can get a little bit more versatility out of that than you might imagine. You just have to learn some of the basic color theory and you know, understand how to mix paint to get what you want. But that's a great way to practice with very low stakes and just have fun with it because you don't need to have it be super serious. Painting is supposed to be fun. If you are wanting to invest in something a little bit nicer, get something that's within your budget. Don't go crazy buying something. It's not the paint that makes the artist, it's the practice, it's the artist. Paint is nice. Obviously I've invested in some nicer things, but it's not going to magically turn your art into professional level art if you buy professional level paints. You need to build up your skills. So I would definitely recommend buying something cheaper within your budget from the get-go and then build. Get to the point where you can add and, and invest in something nicer when you feel like you've got more legs under you. Because you definitely don't want to be afraid to use your paints. It sort of defeats the purpose of painting. That being said, if you do end up buying something a little bit nicer, don't be terrified of the price tag and feel like you're gonna use it up really quickly. I have been a professional watercolorist and painter and whatnot for five years now, for five years. And I bought several of these stressing about how expensive they were and being afraid I was going to use them up. I bought this set of gold watercolor paints. I think they were $25 for this set and that seemed exorbitant at the time. I was much more strapped for cash when I purchased this, but I invested in it. I am still using it. I use it all the time. I've used it so much and there is not a single color that I am out of. They last way longer than you'd expect, I promise you. And if you feel like whatever paint you're using isn't really coming through, the colors aren't really looking right, there's something, it feels like your work still looks like crap, even though you've bought a decent set of paint, make sure to check that the actual paper is decent quality. The paper is the foundation of your art. If you have crap paper, it doesn't matter. You could throw gold encrusted paint on that thing and it will still probably look like crap because the paper wasn't meant for that kind of a medium. So either use cheap watercolor paper, like Strathmore Canson, the standard brands that you can find, or get a mixed media sketchbook to do it because it might not be quite as high quality as watercolor paper, but it's able to take something as wet as watercolor and still give you good results. It will still be able to show you what you were trying to achieve. Also, I really like using a mixed media sketchbook because again, lower stakes, it doesn't feel like it's a, a grand piece of art. It's just a sketchbook. You know, you can kind of, you can mess up and, and make a bunch of crap and turn the page and voila, new page, great. Sketchbook, doesn't matter. But at the end of the day, I know I've said this before, I'm gonna say it again. Don't be afraid to use your paint. Don't be afraid to make bad art. You might feel like anything that you make is going to probably not be very good and you don't want to waste your nice supplies on something that's going to be terrible. But even if it is terrible, it's not wasted. The only paint that is wasted is the paint that remains in your tube or pan or bottle or whatever. You buy these things to use them, so don't treat them as something sacred. Use your paint, make something, and then make something better tomorrow, and then continue to grow, because that's the only way you're gonna get better as an artist is by committing to making a mess, even if it's terrible. Anyway, I hope this cleared up some of the confusion that you may have had about the differences between these different paints and what they're good for. Hopefully you're able to move forward with picking a particular form of paint that is going to be good for you as you move forward as an artist. Thank you so much for watching. Don't know why I did that. Uh, have a wonderful day and make sure to check out some of my other videos if you're interested. You know the whole spiel, like, subscribe, whatever, do whatever you want. Uh, but either way, I appreciate you watching and uh, I'll catch you later. Bye.